this is our winning fish. It's a beautiful turbot. Ideally, try and find a fishmonger you can put your trust in and always buy your fish whole. It's the best guarantee of freshness. There's a few things to look for when choosing fresh fish. First, go to the gills here, and they should be pink and clean. That's wonderful. And the eyes, the eyes should be glistening, shiny. They shouldn't be sunken, glazed over. And the skin, well, it should have a nice resistance. You can see here there's a lovely sheen to it. So now we need to fillet the fish. And to do this, there's a central bone that runs down here. What we're going to do is run the knife along that bone first. Well, I'm left-handed, so I might be doing it differently to some of you. But working from the tail up, you can feel the two bones that come out from the central bone. Just get the knife running along there and just work it, slide it along the bone to the outside of the fillet. And you'll feel the fillet coming away nice and easily. Again, with this, just be very gentle. You've taken all the care to choose this fish. Be very careful when, when filleting it. Now, I'm leaving the skin on because I like the flavour and the texture of the skin, but if you want to, just, just remove it after you've taken the fillets off. Here we are. That's a beautiful fillet of turbot. Now, you can see here the thickness in the flesh. This is really important if we're going to keep all that moisture and juiciness inside our fish. My tests reveal the Aaron Victory is the best variety for making chips. If you can't get those, go for Maris Piper. Now I'm cutting the potatoes into fairly irregular sized chips because that makes for an interesting range of textures. The only important thing here is don't cut them too thick. If you do, there'll be too much moisture in the inside of the potato, inside of the chip, and what that'll do is it'll render the chips soggy. So once you've cut the chips, Place them in a bowl of water and just leave them under the tap for about five minutes, just until the water becomes clear, washing out some of the starch. I've devised this recipe to make the fluffiest, crispest chips imaginable. It's a three-stage process. For the first step, after the potatoes have been washed, place them in a pan of lightly salted water and cook them on simmering. Now, they'll take between 10 and 20 minutes, depending on the potato. And what we're looking for here is we want the potato to be as close as possible to breaking up. Be very careful, though, if it's a few seconds too long and you're going to end up with potato soup. These are just about ready. If I can show you this, you'll see the outside of the potato. It's all broken up. All those crags and cracks will absorb the oil and make the outside of the chip wonderfully crisp. So at this point, we need to drain them. I've got here a cake rack set over a tray. Just place them on the rack. There's still a lot of steam inside that chip, a lot of moisture. We want to get rid of some of that. We do that by using the fridge. Now, the air in here is very dry. I'm going to put this in here for about 30 minutes. So here's some that have been in for about half an hour or so. You can see they've got that wonderful rough surface. But what's happened is while the potatoes cool down, the starch in there has actually recrystallized. It's firmed up the chip. And that'll mean that we're going to have a wonderful crust. So now for step two of the three-stage process, the first frying. In here are chips that are dried in the fridge. The oil's set to 130 degrees centigrade. They've been in here for about five minutes, and they're just about ready. What we're looking for is the outside of each chip is just beginning to color, but no more than that. At this stage, we dry them out once more. There's still a little bit too much moisture inside each chip. If we don't get rid of that, these chips are still going to become a bit soggy. So, we turn them back on the cake rack and repeat the process again, putting them in the fridge, leaving them to dry out a little bit further. And once that's done, you can place them in a sealed container and leave them until you're ready for the third stage, the final frying. Well, after a lot of head scratching, we managed to crack the recipe for the batter. But what you need is one of these, a soda siphon used for making carbonated drinks. We're going to use it to put more bubbles in the batter. So, to make the batter recipe, in here, I've got flour and rice flour. I'm going to add to that some honey. Now, this will just help the colour of the batter. And then vodka. Then finally, I'm going to add the beer. It's important to open this last minute because we want to keep as much gas in here as possible. It's going to make the batter even lighter. 
Mix everything together. Again, it's important to keep the bubbles. Don't be too worried if you've got some lumps still in here. If anything, that's actually going to make for a more interesting texture. Now I need to fill the siphon. Okay, you can see these lumps going in. Those lumps are going to give us really wonderful little nuggets of crisp batter. To charge the siphon, a canister CO2 here. I'm going to do that three times to get, and you get as much carbon dioxide in here as possible. So when this is fully charged, it needs to go in the fridge. And the reason for this is carbon dioxide is much more soluble in cold liquid. So by cooling the batter down, we're going to get more gas, more bubbles, and make for a crisper, lighter batter. So now to our chips. This is the third and final stage for our chips. After the second drying in the fridge, they need to be fried one more time. Now these have been in here for three minutes at 190 degrees centigrade. Another four or five minutes and they'll be ready. Onto the fish. I've got in here a pan of oil. I've used a pan not a fryer for two reasons. One, because of the size of it. But secondly, and more importantly, we need to cook this batter really quickly. Most fryers are not very accurate and reliable at higher temperatures. So I've got a probe. It's very important to make sure you know the temperature. We're looking for 220. I'm using the probe to make sure the oil doesn't get too hot. The batter, just empty this out into the bowl. You can see all the bubbles. The reason for coating the fish in seasoned flour is to make sure that the batter sticks, otherwise it's going to fall off. So into the batter, and then straight into the oil. Here's something I picked up from the tempura restaurant. Just taking a spatula, and drizzling that batter on top of the fish. And you're going to get these wonderful shards of really light, crisp batter. OK, these chips are now ready. This batter is so crispy. It looks fantastic. And the chips. Now, I just want to have a look at the fish. That is perfect.